Bailey. He's the head of the Barkley House. Agnes Barkley is his devoted and loving spouse. They've got kids, Terry Roger and Chester too. And all of them are Barkley through and through. Cause they're the Barkleys and they're okay. And Arnie Barkley with a very open mind is always first to let you know his own opinionated ways. But even though he may grumble and get up tight, just remember Arnie Barkley's bark is worse than his bite. Hi, Terry. Hi, Marcia. Hi, Chuck. I just wanted to remind you about the party tonight, Terry. I didn't forget. You can call for me at 7. Oh, well, is your father going to be home? Oh, don't worry about meeting my dad. He'll love you. Well, I don't want him to love me. Just like me. <laughs> He'll like you, too, Chuck. See you at 7. I hope Dad does like Chuck. You know how he is about my new boyfriends. Step to the rear of the bus. Step to the rear, please. <laughs> Get off the driver. Get off my back. <laughs> Market Street, next stop. <laughs> Near the entrance, let the passengers on. Have the fare ready. Step lively. Excuse me, sir, uh, but I don't know how to get to Center Street. Does this bus go there? Yeah, it goes to Center Street. Oh, good. Then do you mind if I follow you there in my car? It's a free country. Did you get a load of that clown's getup? You think he belonged in a circus or something? Boy. <laughs> Am I glad my daughter doesn't go with one of those types? <laughs> Oh, what a day on that bus. Have I got a headache? Want a headache tablet, Arnie? No, thanks. I always keep some handy. Quarters, dimes, nickels, and uh, <laughs> headache tablets. <laughs> oh, boy. I can't wait to get home and relax. Punch out time. Hey, open the door. Get me out of here. with the bus company. I haven't had one accident on the road, but I've had 600 accidents in the locker room. <laughs> well, it's keeping that kid of mine. He should have been here by now. Gosh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. You wild kids with your motorcycles? You're lucky you're not my son. I am your son. It's me, Roger. Roger? Where's my car? It's still in the repair shop. Well, how am I supposed to get home? On my motorcycle. Not in one of those things. I'll take the bus. On second thought, the motorcycle's less crowded. Hold on to me, Dad. I'll take care of myself. You just watch your driver. Care for that car. Well, watch that truck. Would you signal when you turn? I did signal. I used the blinker. Well, use your hand. Let go of the parking meter, Dad. Can't you control this thing? If I were in the driver's seat, I'd show you what to do. I'm in the driver's seat. What'll I do? Just keep it straight, Dad. Ah! Dad. You watch. I can't look. Dad, I think a policeman's gonna stop us. Well, I hope somebody does. Pull over! Yes, sir, officer. I 
think I found the brakes. I think you found the throttle, Dad. Uh, how long you been driving a motorcycle? To tell you the truth, uh, officer, <laughs> this is my first time. Oh, congratulations. You did an amazing job. I did? Yeah, you're the first driver ever to break every rule in the book. <laughs> I hope Dad had a good day. I wouldn't want him to be in a bad mood when he meets Chuck. Oh, I'm sure he'll like your new boyfriend, dear. You think so, Mom? Well, it would help if he's in a good mood. And just to make sure, I have some insurance ready. His newspaper, his slippers, and a nice juicy steak for dinner. Thanks, Mom. I hope it works. It should. That's what my mother did when I brought your father home for the first time to meet my dad. Did it soften your dad up? Oh, my, yes. When he kicked your father out of the house, he did it much more gently. <laughs> that sounds like Roger's motorcycle. Oh, it is. And your father's with him. Please let dad be in a good mood. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, what are you staring at, Beagle? Didn't you ever see a motorcycle before? I didn't say anything. <laughs> That's the first smart thing you ever did. Good evening, dear. What's so good about it? Uh-oh. Remember the insurance. Here's your paper, already open to the sports page. Uh, just sit right down and be comfortable. <laughs> and here are your slippers. Okay, okay. Where'd you hide it? Uh, hide what, dear? Where is it? Where'd you put it? It put what? Whatever it is you bought today. I didn't buy anything, dear. Oh, yeah? I'm wise to that newspaper and slipper routine. You're softening me up to show me a bill. His name isn't Bill. It's Chuck. Chuck? Uh, Chester means, um, uh, the chuck wagon's ready. Oh, oh uh, yes. It's time for dinner. Keep your mouth closed. If I keep my mouth closed, how am I gonna eat? Yeah. Real good meal, Agnes. Steak, potatoes, hot rolls. Uh, thank you. A care for more butter? That's one thing I've had plenty of. You've been buttering me up since I got home. I wonder what for. I'll get it. I'll get it. Hello, sir. My name's... <laughs> Was it, Dad? Nobody. I'll see what nobody wants. <laughs> Hello, you must be Chuck. I'm Terry's mother, and this is her father. Oh, how do you do, sir? I think we met this morning. What is that clown doing here? That's no clown. That's Chuck, my new boyfriend. He's taking me to a party tonight. Oh, so you were behind my stake in newspapers. Uh, no, sir. I just got here. Arnie, uh, may I have a word with you in the kitchen? A word with me? Say to me. Arnie. Okay, that's your word. Now it's my turn. I won't have my daughter going out with a freak. Arnie, please. He'll hear you. Hear me? <laughs> Not without hair over his ears. And George Washington had long hair, and he was the father of our country. When I'm the father of this family, I earn the money, I pay for the house, and I'll decide who's good enough for my daughter. Uh, I, I think I better go, Terry. Don't worry. Mom will calm him down. I hope. I'm sure he's a very nice boy. You can't tell a book by its cover. Well, I never saw a book cover with hair like that. Give the boy a chance, Arnie. At least have a talk with him. All right, Sugar Plum. I'll talk to him. Check, baby. <laughs> Do you mind if we have a little talk? Not at all, sir. Good, good. I just want to ask you a few simple questions. You ever been in jail? Huh? You believe in the Constitution of the United States? I... Answer yes or no. Yes. So you have been in jail. No. So you don't believe in the Constitution? I didn't say that. Naturally, your kind never admits it. What grade did you get in school? Straight A's. Oh, a bookworm, huh? No, sir, I'm captain of my team. Oh. You go in for sports. Well, maybe you're not so bad after all. Hey, what team are you captain of? The chess team. Chess? <laughs> what kind of a game is that? Uh, well, it's played with two kings, two queens, a pair of rooks, Agnes, and... Agnes, that's not what I meant. Please, Dad, don't give Chuck the third degree. Oh, oh, this is only the first degree. He's got two more degrees to go. Oh, come on, Dad. Chuck looks like a nice guy to me. Me, too. 
Would you trust him with your sister? Sure. I'd even trust him with my motorcycle. Well, I guess there's no higher recommendation than that. Uh, where is this uh, party he's taking you to? It's at Marsha's house, right next door. Well, seeing as it's only next door. Thanks, Dad. Wait, what time would you be home? Twelve. Ten. Now, isn't that shameful, Agnes? That kid's got no manners. He didn't even say it was a pleasure meeting me. Great party, isn't it, Chad? Yeah, I really dig this music. Hey, gang, let's see who can invent the wildest new dance. Good idea. Well, let's try it. I know one. Oh, wait a second. Terry, it's your father again. That's the fourth time in the last ten minutes. Hello? Yes, Dad, I'm fine. Okay, bye. Here's a new dance, the rocking chair. Hey, we've got one, the bicycle. Let's come up with a new dance, too, Terry. Okay, what do we do? Oh, no, not again. Hello, Dad. How am I? Look at Terry and Chuck. What a great dance. What do you call it, Terry? The telephone. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, she's all right. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's all, all right. right. Well, I guess she's all right. Oh, why don't you come to bed, dear? No, no, I'm not coming to bed until they come home. Oh, Arnie, you're acting like an untrusting father. Who's untrusting? I, uh, hmm, want to discuss some chess moves with Chuck? <laughs> Oh, um, uh, good night, dear. Yeah, I can't see over that hedge. I know what I'll do. I'll climb up and get a better view. Right, Chief, I've spotted the prowler. All right, you, get out of there. <laughs> oh, no, you again. Robbing houses to pay for your traffic tickets, huh? Officer, it's not what you think. Father! See, she's my daughter. I was just keeping an eye on her. How could you spy on me? Uh, just a minute. You're his daughter? Yes, officer. Well, in that case, I'll let him go. <laughs> Poor kid. You have enough problems without a father in jail. Uh, eat your breakfast, Terry. It's your favorite, dear. Flapjacks and sausages. I'm too humiliated to eat. You gotta humiliate her more often, Pop. Spying on me in front of my friends. Yeah, that wasn't too cool, Dad. Well, maybe I should apologize for that. Don't apologize until I finish your rolls. <laughs> Chester, that's not nice. If there's something I can do to make it up to you. There is. Let me go to the rock festival today with Chuck. Rock festival? Oh, I just love rocks. I once found a piece of quartz. Agnes, you mean quartz. Uh, you're right, dear. I found two pieces of quartz. Thanks, Dad. I'll tell Chuck to pick me up in his car. His car? <laughs> his car's gonna be my loophole. Hold it! Uh, what kind of a driver is Chuck? He's never had one single ticket, and all the time he's had his driver's license. When did he get his license? Yesterday. But he got a perfect score on the motor vehicle test. Well, he's not going to drive you until he gets a perfect score in the Arnie Barkley test. Arnie, if Chuck passes your driver's test, then will you welcome him with open arms? Well, of course. So it's up to me, as a good father, to make it so tough he can't pass. Okay, first is the eye test. I'm gonna point to some objects in this room and uh, <laughs> you identify them. That'll be a cinch, Chuck. First, I gotta draw the drapes. What for? Well, this is the night driving test. Can you see anything? No. Good. I'll point to some objects and you... Now, by the sound of the crashes, uh, you pointed to a vase, a table, and a lamp. Oh, good. It Chuck got three out of three. I guess he passed the eye test. I guess he passed the eye test. Well, he'll never pass my road test. 
First, the parking test. Park over there. Yes, sir. Too sloppy. You flunk. I thought it was perfect. Perfect? I'll show you how to park a car. Well, I, I better tell you how to work that homemade shift. Never mind. I'll figure it out. And that's reverse. Don't tell me. I, I think I figured it out. Uh oh, Sparkly, I'm not gonna write your name on any more tickets. <laughs> You're not? No. You're such a regular customer, I've had your name already printed on them. See you later. Goodbye, dear. Have fun at the festival. I hope they'll be all right. Now, Arnie, you promised not to worry. Who, me? Worry? I'm not gonna worry. I'm gonna forget about them and the rock festival and relax. I'll watch some TV and push them right out of my mind. Before we play our game, let's meet the first couple. <laughs> when did you two get married? Uh, last week at a rock festival. Rock oh. festival? <laughs> Did you hear that, Agnes? They got married at a rock festival. Oh, isn't that romantic? Romantic? Terry and Chuck might get married at their rock festival. Don't worry, Dad. Kids today don't always get married on their first date. Sometimes they wait till their second date. <laughs> well, that does it. Agnes, we're going after them. They're the grooviest. Oh, and at last we're alone. Alone? Yeah, your father's not here. 250 admission. You charge people to listen to this noise? 250, please. Well, I only have a time. Did you bring any money? Oh, dear, you rushed me out of the house so fast. All I brought was this dish rag. Well, stay here in case the kids come out. I'll go home and get the money. <laughs> Not a cent. Maybe the kids have some money. Chester! Roger! They must be out. I'll borrow the money from Chester's bank. I owe you $2.40. Dad. Hey, what goes on? We got him! Let me up! It's Dad. I'm surprised at you. Stealing from your own son. It wasn't stealing. I just wanted a loan. Uh-oh, another touch. See you around. I need $2.40 in a hurry. Sure, Pop. All we need is some loan information. May I have your name? <clears throat> Arnold M. Buck. You know my name. I'm your father. We're not allowed to show favoritism, sir. You own your own home. Now stop this nonsense and give me the money. Sorry, Pop. But you always told me to be very careful about business matters. Now, any credit references? But you're my own son. Uh, how long have you known me? Chester! Uh, all I have is a ninety, Dad. I'll take it. Drive carefully, Dad. You miss the payment, I get the card. Already? No, no, ninety. My dime, two dollars. Now give me my ticket. Not so fast. You're fifty cents short. So we're even. I missed some of the music. Uh, but I heard some for free, Arnie. Uh, we should pay the man what he wants. Agnes. <laughs> What's that song? The wedding bell rock. I know it. They're getting married. Hey, stop that guy. Oh no, it's my dad. Where's my daughter? <laughs> Well, at least I stopped the wedding. What wedding? There was no wedding. No wedding? Oh. <laughs> oh, no. You again. I know. I get another ticket. Sorry, Barkley. I've used up all my tickets on you. This time, you're going to jail. Arnold Barkley, do you have anything to say before the court passes sentence? No, no, no sir. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. Oh, I'll 
wait for you, Arnie, even if you get life. And we'll start a free Arnie Barkley protest march. If you free that man, I'll protest. Well, then, the court, Barkley, I order you to pay for all damages within 30 days. And I sentence you to three days in jail or ten dollars fine. I, uh, I, uh, I, I don't have the ten dollars with me, Your Honor. Put him in jail. Wait, I have ten dollars. We'll have to skip some movies the next few weeks, Terry. You're doing this for me? After the way I treated you? Well, underneath, I think you're a very nice man, Mr. Barkley. I mean, you can't tell a book by its cover. I know. Someone else told me that once. Case dismissed, you may go. Hold it. You can tell this book by its cover. How to stay out of trouble with the police. <laughs> when I finish this one, I'll write a book of my own called Don't Jump to Wrong Conclusions. As we say in the rock festivals, Dad, now you're with it. <laughs> He's the head of the Barkley House. Agnes Barkley is his devoted and loving spouse. They've got kids, Terry Roger and Chester too. And all of them are Barkleys through and through. Cause they're the Barkleys and they're okay. He may grumble and get up tight. Just remember, Arnie Barkley bark is worse than his bite. There, finished. Know thy neighbor block party. Why the A in neighbor? And what happened to the E, I, G, and H? Oh, we're short of pain. We're short of everything, especially money, Terry. Yeah, unless we start collecting some folding money, the only letters we'll need will be I, O, and U. Looks like Chester's raking in some cash. Let's see. That makes a grand total of $2.12. You've got to be kidding. Boy, that won't pay for the pretzels. That won't even pay for the holes in the pretzels. <laughs> this block party's going to cost us at least 500 bucks. If we could talk pop into advances on our allowances, it'd take us up to the year 2972, around the middle of September. That'd be the day. Oh, Dad, how about a small advance on our allowance for a thousand years? For Dad! Oh, boy. Where are we going to get $500? End of the line. Everybody off. When do we get to 55th Street? Tomorrow at 10 o'clock. My banjo lesson today was F sharp. Hold it, Arnie. I got 15 more buses to move back and park in your slot. Save your strength, Sam. I can drive this sardine can through a hen house without breaking an egg. drive a bus all day, but I gotta walk to my own car. In this town, rapid transit is by foot. Huh? Mommy! Five hundred bucks! I'm rich! I'm rich! Wait till I tell Agnes you can buy meat without looking at the prices! Hundred buckaroos, almost half a thousand dollars. This is what makes America great. 
me, a bus driver, kissing Andrew Jackson. <laughs> Agnes! Agnes! Oh, wifey dear, where's my darling spouse? Are you home, Arnie? I'm home. Honey bun, where you been? Uh, just shopping for dinner, dear. Forget dinner. I've got a surprise for you. Come on. If you're taking me out to eat, Arnie, you're going the wrong way. Agnes, there's a mink in your future. But, Arnie, I'm happy married to you. <laughs> Be calm. Don't get excited like most women do. But I found $500 in bring gags. You get great rack beans. Great rack racks. Hey, bean beans. Uh, Arnie, uh, are you all right, dear? Yeah, yeah. Here. Feast your eyes on this. Oh, my. They're so pretty. Counterfeits are the prettiest. And they take more care when they make them. They're not counterfeits. Look. That's the official seal of the U.S. of A. A counterfeiter couldn't print that on a bill. It'd be against the law. Oh, Arnie, I think you should give this money back. I'll tell you what. I'll check the newspaper, and if there's a law stand for 500 bucks, I'll turn it in and cancel my subscription to the paper. Oh, Arnie. But until then, it stays under the mattress for safekeeping. And don't read a word of this to anybody, not even the kids. The news of my wealth gets out. You'll see more outstretched palms around here than in Miami. We'll look positively silly if we have to cancel the block party. Yeah, everyone wants to come, but no one wants to donate. I just got a great idea. What? what? Let's forget the block party and spend the money on donuts. Oh, you're a big help. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. What's with you kids? Looks like you just lost your best friend. Worse than that. Our block party's run into a snag. King size. We need $500. Oh, talk about a coincidence. Your father's just... Dad, uh, your father just said I'd be glad to donate. And here's a quarter. Just get about 2000 more and you've got your $500. <laughs> uh, thanks, Dad. Hmm. Maybe I can invent something to earn $500. There, it's finished. Behold, the world's first buried treasure, Sniffer Outer. Chester, only pirates bury treasures. And there doesn't happen to be any in the neighborhood. The money's at the beach is buried in the sand. It falls out of people's pockets. And they're so busy yelling at their kids, they don't notice it. Let's see how that nightmare works. Okay. First, we activate it. And if there's any money around, the radar beeper will come up. See? It's picked up the scent of money. It's... it's working. A penny. It picked up a scent of money, all right. One cent. At this rate, we'll have to sift every grain of beach sand from Maine to Miami. Hey, I've got an idea. Tomorrow, we'll leave our collection box in front of the bank. And I'll make a poster and appeal for funds. Okay, kids, break it up. Time to hit the sack. And don't forget to brush your teeth. Aw, oh, Dad, who's going to see him when you're asleep? The Tooth Fairy. Now brush him. <laughs> window. Agnes, you opened the window. Of only the lower half, dear. I thought I'd let a little air in. Also a little second story, man. We got a fortune under that mattress. Nobody's gonna hijack my bed. Crazy dream that I'm riding a camel. Well, dear, be careful you don't fall off. Uh, just hang on to the hum. <laughs> oh, 
Well, we better check the collection box. Yeah, it's been in front of the bank a whole three hours. There it is, right where we left it. At least we broke even. Nobody took the box. <laughs> hey, somebody must have donated something. I feel paper, lots of paper. Nuts. They've been using it as a litter box. No, it's the real stuff. Tens and twenties. And more tens and twenties. Crazy. There must be $500 in there. Come on. Let's go buy all this stuff for the block party before the cost of living goes up. <laughs> Last stop, third and main. Hmm, lunchtime. <laughs> the next stop for me is Gladys's Cafe. Here's your lunch, Mr. Barkley. The usual sardine on rye. Yeah, every day sardine on rye. The inside of my stomach is getting to feel like a fish hatchery. Uh, hi, Arnie. Mind if I join you for lunch? If you join me, Beagle, you'll have to order your own lunch. What'll it be? Uh, the businessman's lunch, Gladys. Yeah, listen to that guy. Big man. Businessman's lunch. Well, I'll show him. Oh, uh, Gladys? Take these uh, appetizers away and bring me the uh, bus driver's lunch. Double steak, uh, double onion, broccoli with double hollandaise, and uh, salsa. Room temperature. Oh, I'm lunch. What happened? Did you strike oil, Arnie? No, but you might say I had a <laughs> sidewalk come in. Oh, that, was, that was a good lunch. Uh, I'll pick up the tab, Beagle. Let's see, uh, a 20 ought to do it. Keep the change, my dear. The jingling of coins in my pocket disturbs my eardrums. I guess you did hit it, Rich Arnie. Well, I'll see you later. <laughs> I guess I showed him. Hey, who are you? Don't be frightened, Arnie. I'm your conscience. If you're talking about that 500, I found it fair and square. Someone lost that $500, Arnie. Someone who might desperately need it. Perhaps a poor widow. Oh, where is that $500 I saved for by taking in laundry? With a box of detergent in your hand, you could do a TV commercial. <laughs> oh, you can't be that heartless. That $500 might have been lost by an old sailor. Bash my barnacles. If Arnie don't give me back that 500 fish I lost, I can't buy that chicken farm. That winner wasn't bad, but you're doing rotten sailor. Hi, gang. The head of the family is here. Hi, Dad. Dad? Hey, who turned my living room into a warehouse? It'll be all cleared out by tomorrow. We practically bought out the town for the Know Thy Neighbor block party. We rented loudspeakers, bought food, favors, fireworks. That must have cost a pretty penny. What'd you use for money? The good people of our town donated 500 bucks. And were we ever surprised to find it in our collection box? Well, looks like our family had two lucky days. Two lucky days? Uh-huh. Yesterday, I'm walking down the street, and why, Rika? I find 500 bucks lying on a sidewalk. <laughs> wow, who lost it? How do I know? Widow, an old sailor? Did you give it back? Columbus found America. Did he give it back? But Daddy, you should turn that money in. You know that honesty is the best policy. Not only did I find the money honestly, I found it democratically. Democratically? Sure. Whoever lost it had the same equal chance to find it as I did. Well, dear, as long as you found it democratically, you should be willing to give it back democratically. Give it back democratically. And just what is that supposed to mean, Agnes? We'll put it to a family vote, dear. Great idea, Mom. All those in favor of Dad doing what we all know he ought to do, raise your hand. Now, just a minute. Huh? Dad, you made the right decision. Well, I gotta admit, it's a load off my mind. Not to mention my pocketbook. <laughs> I'll call the local neighborhood paper and run an ad. Found money, Arnie Barkley. It isn't everyone that gets his name in the paper. I'll go get the money so we can spend our last few hours together. Well, Arnie, old boy, it's easy come, easy go. Look at it this way. 
At least I won't have a lumpy mattress. Hmm. Money must have rolled down. What's the matter, Arnie? The, 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 the money, it's, it's gone. Somebody picked my mattress. Wait a minute, Dad. Let's figure this thing out scientifically. Exactly, where did you hide the money? I'll show you. Right here, like this. <laughs> what was that? That's my buried treasure sniffer outer. Oh, no. Come back here, in the name of the Lord. Monster, it swiped my $500. But it was thoughtful, Arnie. It gave it to the children for their block party. Yeah, that's a point in its favor. The kids have spent all the money. Come on, we gotta stop that air. I'm speaking for Arnie Barkley. We want you to stop his ad. You can't. He says it's too late. The papers will be on the street in half an hour. Oh, no. Now what do we do? We gotta buy up every paper in town. I'll buy out the newsstands on the north side of town. Terry, you take the south. I'll take the east. Arnie, you go west. And Chester, you take what's left. What's left after north, south, east, and west? What's the total, Chester? Did we buy out the whole edition, all 500? According to my computations, every paper except one. Don't be a worrywart, Dad. It's only one paper out of 500. Yeah, what are the odds against that one person being the one who lost the money? Arnie, a telephone for you. Who is it? I don't know. He just says he's a reader of the evening sunset. Oh, it must be the man who lost the money. What'll I do? Hello? You're the loser? Yeah, this is the find E. Can you identify the money? That's right. Five hundred dollars. He identified the money. To whom am I speaking? Your Honor. You're a Your Honor? Municipal Court Judge Terrier. You're an honest man, Barkley. Anyone else would have kept the money and spent it. That would have been dishonest. And in my court, I throw the book at a dishonest man. <laughs> But you don't have to worry about that now, do you, Barkley? <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, Your Grace. I'll bring you your $500 tomorrow. You see how honesty works, Pop? Yeah, and honesty will get me 20 years. Where am I going to get $500 before tomorrow? And here come our next contestants in the big 14th annual Over 40 Water Ski Contest. knows what he got himself into. Well, if he wins the contest, he can at least pay back Judge Terrier. That would be great, except for one thing. What's that, dear? Well, he doesn't know how to water ski. <laughs> Wowie, look at that. My goodness, I've never seen a water skiing contest before. What do you call this thing? It's a wetsuit, Dad. A wetsuit? I'll get wet enough when I get in that water. <laughs> Come on, Dad. It's almost your turn. Do me a favor, will you? Get me a pair of slow skis. <laughs> All set, Dad? Yeah, just tell me when it's over. Our next contestant, Arnold Barkley. We're off. Daddy, come up on top of the water. I can't. Just imagine there's sharks in the water. Sharks? fancy skiing. Not one move that's in the books. And the winner of the $500 prize for originality in water skiing, Arnie Barkley. Hooray! Hooray! Yeah, take
take this to that municipal court judge. Sure, Dad. You see, it doesn't hurt to be honest. Oh, yeah. You're so right. <laughs> this way for hot dogs, hamburgers, pickles, and beans. And that way for bicarbonate of soda. Oh, hi, Judge Terrier. It was just swell that you could come to our block party. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for the world, Terry. Great idea. Listen to all that racket. Can you imagine all those grown people out there making fools of themselves? And we're going to join them. Come on, Arnie. But why do I have to go? It's a big surprise. Now, come on. Oh, oh, hey, everybody. Here comes the guest of honor. Three cheers for Arnie Barkley. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, who? <laughs> you, Arnie. Me? I don't get it. You will, Dad. Come up on the platform. Yes, Arnie Barkley. This modest man has taught us all a lesson in honesty. He was under no, no obligation to return this $500 to me. There was no way I could identify it. He could have kept the money. I could have kept it? However, I insist that Arnie Barkley accept from me a liberal reward. Well, at least it's not a total loss. No, you won't take that reward, Dad. Honesty is its own reward. Well... Yay! Barkley! You know, you're right. A million bucks couldn't make me feel as good as I do right now. Yay! How did you get loose? Don't you know honesty is the best policy? Here, Judge. For he's an honest good fellow. For he's an honest good fellow. For I'm an honest good fellow. Which nobody can deny. Debating team is proud to present its final member, Miss Terry Barkley. That's my daughter. That's my daughter. That's my daughter. I know, Mom. I'm your son. Relax, Mom. It's only a high school debate. Honorable judges, worthy opponents, ladies and gentlemen, the subject under debate is women's rights. It's my opinion that women should have the right to compete with men for jobs. Women should be considered equal to men and should have equal opportunities. I wonder what's keeping your father. Don't worry, Mom. He said he'd be here right after work. Oh, I hope he's not late. He wanted to hear Terry speak. Oh, boy. If I miss my daughter's speech, she'll never forgive me. And if I get a ticket for speeding, I'll never forgive her. <laughs> oh, what a predicament. <laughs> Made it at last. In conclusion, the Declaration of Independence clearly gives us the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Oh, there's your father. Excuse me? Pardon me? Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Did I miss much? Terry just finished. You're too late, dear. Yeah, no wonder. Those working women made me late. 
Women drivers blocking traffic. Women on the bus crowding the aisles. Women on the streets jamming the intersections. Women don't belong working. They belong in the home. Uh, what did Terry speak about? Women's right to work. What? <laughs> Congratulations, Miss Parker. The judges rule in favor of women's right to compete with men for jobs. I object! I object! Arnie, please! Oh, come on, Dad. The debate's over. Yeah, don't start anything, Dad. Well, she's the one who started things. My own daughter, talking women's lib. She only believes in women's rights. Women belong at home. We all belong home. Now, let's go there, dear. <laughs> and furthermore, women just can't compete with us men. They're not as smart as we are. Right, Agnes? You're wrong, dear. That proves my point. If you were smart, you'd agree with me. <laughs> Not only are men smarter than women, but they're stronger and more capable. <laughs> oh, this lock is stuck. Because you're upset, Dad. Let me try. I can open a lock. Sometimes a woman's touch can help. What do you think now, Dad? I think a woman built that lock. <laughs> oh, you women have the life. Just sitting around all day, watching TV, while we men go out and work. A housewife has a lot to do, too, Dad. There's cooking, cleaning, shopping, sewing, and making your dinner. That's nothing compared to driving a bus. I'd like to see us switch jobs for just one day. Why don't you take him up on it, Mom? Huh? Huh? Drive my bus? That's a man's work. I'm happy doing my housework. But if I wanted to be a bus driver, I should at least have the opportunity. That's women's rights. Okay, your opportunities come. Thanks, Dad. I have to drive the bus tomorrow. And if my boss agrees, you can have the job. Do it, Mom. Show him. Oh, dear, I don't know. I mean, you'd make a great bus driver. Sure. You still have your chauffeur's license from driving that school bus once. Very well, I'll do it. Tomorrow, I'll drive the bus, and you do the housework. Well, we better get some sleep. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. Yeah. Mom's going to be our dad, and Dad's going to be our mom. I'll have the last laugh when I spend the day tomorrow lounging around and watching TV. <laughs> well, I'm off to work, dear. I'll be home at 6. I know what time I get off work. Bye-bye, children. Don't forget to help your father in the house. Bye. Bye. Don't worry about me. Who's going to help you drive my bus? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Arnie, dear. Okay, here's my schedule. 9 o'clock, make the beds. 9.17, dust. 9.32, vacuum. Then do the laundry, shop, cook, and then watch TV. You think it'll be that easy for him? We better stick around in case it isn't. You know what happens to the best plans of mice and men. And my pa. Can we help you, Dad? No, thanks. I'm doing okay by myself. Wow. That was great, Dad. Bed making was my specialty in the Army. Busy, see, busy. Now for the dusting. Quick, what time is it? It's 9.03. You're 14 minutes ahead of schedule. Swell, that'll leave more time to watch TV. Is the lady of the house in? You're talking to him. Very funny. Well? I'm selling magazines. You're not on my schedule. That interruption cost me 30 seconds. Who is it now? It's Mrs. Beagle. Yes, what can I do for you, Mrs. Beagle? Uh, may I borrow an itsy bitsy cup of sugar, please? Sugar's fattening. <laughs> How can I get my housework done? Let's stay out of his way for a while. Right. Let's see. 
Got to dry the dishes, make gelatin for dessert tonight, and fix lunch for the kids. Hmm. Hand drying these dishes will take too much time. Aha! I got it. Ha <laughs> ha! Who says hair dryers just have to dry hair? <laughs> now for the strawberry gelatin. <laughs> now what? What? I'm sorry, Mrs. Yaphound. Agnes is out. But I don't have time to gossip. Oh, boy. While she's yakking, I'll fix lunch. One sandwich for Terry, one for Roger, one for me, and five for that chowhound Chester. I wonder if Mrs. Yapound has finished yapping. Huh? Oh, boy. I'd better hurry up with my vacuuming. Oh, no, not again. How do you do, ma'am? Oh, I mean, sir. <laughs> Sorry. I represent the Happy Housewife Brush Company. I don't want any Happy Housewife Brushes. <laughs> ah, thank you. I knew you'd welcome me into your home. <laughs> hey, let me show you a few of my brushes. Now, here's an electric combination pot and oven cleaner. Get out! For a big mouth like you, a toothbrush. <laughs> Get out or I'll call the police. Ah, uh, 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 just a minute. With each purchase, you get this beautiful free shower cap. My vacuum. <laughs> My brushes! That'll cost you $40. <laughs> On second thought, I, uh, keep them with my compliments. <laughs> I better pull a plug. <laughs> Help! Somebody do something! My whole schedule just went up in smoke. We heard an explosion. Look at this mess. What happened, Dad? Nothing. Compared to the trouble your mother's probably having on my bus. <laughs> and next stop, Main Street. Oh, what a lovely dress. Uh, run out and buy it, dear. I'll wait. You're holding up the bus until she buys a dress. Oh, I just couldn't let her miss a bargain like that. <laughs> Does this bus go to Elm Street? Uh, no, sir. That's way off my route. You'll have to change to another bus. Well, I don't have time to wait for another bus. My wife is waiting for me on the corner. Oh, you poor man. In that case, I'll take you there. <laughs> We're going in the wrong direction. What are you doing? I'm just taking this nice man to meet his wife. Well... If you're giving door-to-door -door service, drop me at Wagner Street. Take me to Force and Maple. Colonial Avenue. Drop me off at the post office. Where's he in Victoria? Uh, let's see, Wagner Street, Force and Maple, post office. Oh, dear. Driving a bus is harder than I thought. I hope Arnie's having an easier time with the housework. You're back on schedule, Dad. Yeah. But I still have to go to the laundromat with all this wash. And then go to the supermarket. Wait, Dad. I'll go to the supermarket for you. Oh, no, no. That would be cheating. I'm not supposed to have help. I sometimes do the shopping for Mom. Okay. Hop in, Terry. <laughs> Can we help you with the laundry? I don't want to cheat. Do you help your mother with the laundry? In a way. We help to get the clothes dirty. In that case, let's go. <laughs> Well, 
Let's see now. Two cups for every four pounds of wash in hot water. One cup for every three pounds in soft water. Well, I can't figure this out. We'll use a whole box and get them nice and clean. <laughs> now let's reserve a big dryer. Hey, here's one. This one's mine. No! I wash! The hell? Stop this thing! Ooh. We got you, Dad. <laughs> didn't do it, she did. <laughs> hey, Pop, look. Yikes. Oh, no. Do you think I put in too much soap? <laughs> Will you help me out of here? <laughs> this is getting to be a habit. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I'll sure be glad when Agnes gets home tonight. <laughs> Dinner saved. Wake up, Mom. Step to the rear of the bus. Oh, my. I dreamed I was still working. Okay, gang. Dig in. What? What is it? It's chicken. So am I. I don't think I'll eat it. That's okay with me. That leaves more for me and your mother. I'm too exhausted from driving to eat. Oh, I don't know how you do it, Arnie. <laughs> to tell the truth, honey, housework is tough, too. You know, you women don't have it as easy as I thought. Well, we've both learned our lesson, dear. From now on, you work and I'll stay home. You got a deal, Agnes. Boy, I can't wait to get back to my job driving my bus. Hello. Mrs. Barkley, this is Mr. Airedale. It's your boss, dear. Mrs. Barkley, we've received hundreds of phone calls and telegrams about your service to the passengers. Oh, I'm really sorry, Mr. Airedale. About what, dear lady? They're all praising my new woman driver. Just listen to this. Commendation to Agnes Barkley for showing courtesy and consideration. And it's been signed by all your passengers. I've decided to replace Arnie with a woman driver permanently. And that woman, my dear, will be you. But, Mr. Airedale, you've got other men on the job. Why are you replacing me? Because, Arnie, my boy, it was your, and I might add, great idea. Oh, dear. I don't want to take Arnie's job. My place is in the home. Well, if you don't take the job, I'll replace him with another woman. Bye. Uh, but, Mr. A oh, he hung up. Gosh, Dad lost his job. I'll have to keep driving your bus, dear. Well, I'm not going to keep doing your housework. Well, I don't like it either. What else can we do? I'll find some way to change his mind. I'm not going to stay home and do all the cooking. I hope not. We'll all starve. <laughs> I've got to think of a way to get my job back. I hope you think of one soon. I have to go to work. And goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Agnes. Boy, I'll go bananas doing women's work. Wait, I've got it. I'll pose as a woman and apply for my own job as a woman driver. Wouldn't that be deceitful? I'm posing as a woman at home, so what's the difference if I pose as one on a bus? I don't think it's... Come on, help me get into your mother's clothes. You really shouldn't. What can we do? There's no arguing with a woman. I heard that. <laughs> Come on, kids, give me a hand. Oh, I hope that nosing neighbor Beagle doesn't see me in his getup. <laughs> Good luck, Pop. Beagle! for a job of woman bus driver. Oh, well, we have one. And if she works out, I just might hire you two. Oh, thank you, thank you. Barkley! Oh, my wig. Get out of here before I throw you out. That's no way to treat a lady. Out! Please, Mr. Raredale, couldn't I have my old job back? I could pose as a woman. The passengers will never know. Barkley, you'll get your job back when you win this contest. 
What contest? The community's mother of the year contest. <laughs> he said he'd give me back my job when I'm voted mother of the year. It's all my fault. If I hadn't debated on women's rights, this never would have happened. And don't blame yourself, dear. I didn't want this. I just wanted equal opportunity. Hey, Roger Chester, come on. I've got an idea. What's up, sis? I got a brainstorm. Dad'll get his job back when he's voted Mother of the Year, right? Yeah. So we'll enter him in the contest and get him voted Mother of the Year. But the Mother of the Year is supposed to be a woman. If I can argue for women's rights, I can argue for my father's rights, right? Right. Let's enter his name on the ballot. Let's go. Right on. Yes, this is the contest headquarters, but you can't enter your father for Mother of the Year. If a woman should have the right to compete with men, a man should have the right to compete with women. Well, you do have a point there. Then you'll put his name on the ballot? Very well, but I doubt if he'll win. Just leave that to us. Come on, we've got the perfect slogan. Father for Mother. <laughs> but you've got to vote for my father for Mother of the Year. I can't talk now, Terry. I have to practice. Tommy! <laughs> Will you vote for my father? I'm voting for my mother. Well, if you vote for my father for Mother of the Year, I'll vote for your mother for Father of the Year. Oh, okay. Thanks. See you later. Fellow Americans, a vote for my father is a vote for all humanity for all the glorious ideals we cherish so dearly. Beat it, Chester! That clubhouse is closed! Oh, Barkley, Barkley, mother, mother of the year. year. There's, There's no mother, mother like, like my, my father. father. <laughs> In a moment, we'll have the results of the local election for the mother of the year. This year, one of the candidates is a man, Mr. Arnie Barkley, or should I say, Mrs. Arnie Barkley. I'd go down there and punch him in the nose. If my hands weren't sore from washing dishes. Just a moment, folks. Here are the results. And the winner is my mother. Arnie Barkley came in second. And a close third was Mrs. Tough luck, Dad. Sorry you didn't win. You might have lost the election, Daddy. But you'll always be a winner in this house. Thanks, kids. You should be elected Children of the Year. <laughs> Hello? Barkley, I just heard the election results. I know, and you call to gloat. No, sir, I call to say that any man who wants his job bad enough to run for Mother of the Year deserves to have his job back. <laughs> Report for work first thing tomorrow. Yes, sir. Hooray! Hey! Arnie, I am so happy. So am I. And I promise never to debate on women's rights again. You debate anything you want, honey. After all, if I didn't have the right to run for Mother of the Year, I might have ended up your mother for a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Barkley House. Agnes Barkley is his devoted and loving spouse. They've got kids, Terry Roger and Chester too. And all of them are Barkley through and through. But they're the Barkleys and they're okay. And though he may grumble and get up tight, just remember Arnie Barkley's bark is worse than his bite.
Come on, Pop. Do you have to measure my height like I'm a kid? Since I buy the food that makes you grow, I just want to check my investment. Shut up five-eighths of an inch. Got that, Agnes? Well, even as a baby, Roger was tall for his age. He used to sleep with his feet sticking out of the bassinet. All right, step up, Terry. You're next. Okay, Daddy. Hey, my little gal shooting up, too. Saving me for last gives me an edge. Because I'm growing every minute. I always say a man's only got to be tall enough for his feet to touch the ground. Lincoln said it, too. Well, I guess we think similar. Leaping skyscrapers. Chester has grown a whole two inches. And that's without my hat. It must be that wheat germ I sneak into his jelly beans, dear. But two inches in nine months. Let's see, figuring 12 months a year... That seems fair. In 33 years, he'll be 12 feet tall. And a bachelor. Why a bachelor? Where am I going to find an 11 foot wide? Chester, you don't realize this because your brains are not growing as fast as your body. But your height's going to make you a millionaire. Million? Millionaire? I call your attention to this item in the sports section. A seven foot youngster, Bean Paul Bassett, has been signed as a basketball center. For one million dollars. My goodness, that's over a hundred thousand dollars a foot. Cool. But what's that got to do with Chester now? Hold everything. There's an ad in the paper. Ah, here it is. The Small Fry Basketball League is seeking a coach. Well, seek no more. I'll grab that job, and Coach Barkley's official act will be to make my Chester the star center of the team. I don't want to play basketball. Don't, don't, don't. Jump a little higher. You're born center. I don't want to play, and I'm too short. Mere technicalities. Napoleon was short, but that didn't keep him from making that French pastry. Dad, don't go to that meeting tonight. You're making a big mistake. Chester, no matter how wrong decisions are in this house, your father will make them. Why do dads always have to act like fathers? The meeting of the Small Fry Basketball League will come to order. Uh, what are you here for, sir? To apply for the coach of the Small Fry basketball team. There's just one sticky little problem. Another father has already applied for the job. Now look, basketball's got two referees. Why can't our Small Fry team have two coaches? Seems like you've made your point. Coach Barkley, may I present your co-coach, Hartwell Beagle. Beagle? Uh, delighted to work with you, Barkley. Well, the feeling's not mutual, but I'm willing to make any sacrifice for my son. Practice tomorrow at noon. Okay, look alive there. Snap the ball around. Shoot! 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 Uh, shoot! 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 Beagle, I'll do the coaching. Uh, you're forgetting, Arnie, we are co-coaches. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the reminder. That'll solve our problem. <laughs> Chester, nice shot. Uh, <clears throat> let's get in some practice jumping at center. Uh, Arnie, uh, Chester's a great little kid, but uh, uh, how can you justify playing him at center? Because in baseball, he plays center field. Basketball is different than baseball. So that'll make it easier for Chester. The ball is bigger. <laughs> uh, ready, man? I guess so. Yes, sir. <laughs> Foul! Foul? Who fouled? You did, Beagle. You tossed the ball up when Chester wasn't looking. Now, do it again. Again. One more time. Yeah, it doesn't toss him. And it can't with the ball up in the air. I can't. Face it, Pop. 
Chester doesn't stand a chance against those taller kids. Happy rot. When I was a kid, I played center. And if I could play center, so can Chester. Dear, we've seen your clippings. Yeah, all season you stayed in last place. That was just to make our opponents overconfident. Well, maybe that's what Chester is trying to do. <laughs> Shucks. Face it, Dad. I looked rotten at practice. Maybe I'd be better at croquet. Because I'm built too close to the ground. Nonsense. You gotta grow into basketball. You know, Will Chamberlain was once your size? Uh, but when he was three months old. When he was three months old. Who knows? By the time the first game rolls around, Chester could grow six inches. Right. Any day now, he could shoot up like an asparagus. You mean he'll shoot up like a weed? Yeah. Then he'll be as tall as a pea pod. Uh, that string bean, dear. String bean? That's it. I'll use the old B. I'm going on a crash course and get taller now. And now, ladies, it's time for the Jack the Labrador TV stretch exercises. Stretching exercises should make me taller. Off on the toes. Arms stretched upwards until your fingers reach, reach the sky. <laughs> Keep this up, ladies. Up, 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 up. And you'll shrink down to a size 10 in no time. <laughs> Chester, this is crazy. It's not crazy. It's very scientific. This article says that plants grow taller when someone plays classical music. If it can do it for plants, it can do it for me. Now watch me grow. Another failure. And on your left, public school 32 and a half, attended by my son and athlete, Chester Little Wilt Barkley, the tiny Tim of basketball. <laughs> and tonight, the small fry basketballers are playing the Pee Wee Terriers. Can I bring the baby? If you'll pull that pacifier out of his mouth so he can root for Chester. Well, is he good? Is he good? He'll make more hoops than Martha Washington's dressmaker. <laughs> I can't wait for the first game tonight. Calm down, Pop. It's just a kid's game. You're way too nervous. What makes you think I'm nervous? Well, for one thing, you have your shirt on backwards. <laughs> How about that? Here come the teeth. Oh, my, aren't they cute? Hey, there's my kid. Watch my sunny boy. Natural athlete. He's a whiz. Just like his dad. And now, on the court for a few warm-up shots, the Pee Wee Terriers. Yay! And the small guys. My goodness, aren't they a little old to be wearing diapers? Mother, those are their basketball shorts. Oh. Jumping for center for the Terriers is Gary Greyhound. And for the small prize, Chester Barkley. Are you sure you're only 10 years old? And a point, Chester. Make him overconfident. Gary Greyhound dribbles down court, and Chester Barkley trying to cut it off. And Greyhound dribbles over Barkley's head for two points. Take my kid out when you take your kid out. He is out. He's sitting right over there on the bench. Well, maybe he needs the rest. Chester just hasn't got his second win yet. Another score for the Terriers. Hey, you want to win the game? Let my Willie. 
Chester's there. 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 Chester's there.
watching Chester all week, and uh, well, I have a suggestion. Yeah, put in a substitute. It's only being fair to Chester. And to the team. Agnes, you've been my wife all these years. What do you say? Yank him out, dear. But, but Agnes, I love him. Poor father. Yeah, Mom's asking a lot. We have a substitution here. Billy Boxer for Chester Barkley. It's my fault, Chester. I wanted to be a winning father. Instead, I'm a losing chump. I get it, Bob. Maybe I'll go out for the checker team, where the jumps aren't so high. Chester, I hope you're not gonna indulge in self-pity. I can hardly indulge in self-congratulations. See you again sometime, Lulu. I can't believe it. We're losing worse than ever, even with Chester out of the game. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I watched Chester practice at home. He'd be great as a shooting guard. Well, let's send him in. Lulu, where's Chester? He's gone, Mr. Barkley. A victim of parental pressure. We got a game to win, and she's throwing psychology at me. <laughs> if we got to go find Chester, we'll have to stall the game. How many timeouts have we got? Uh, five. Good. Call five timeouts. Come on, gang, let's find Chester. Chester, are you in there? It's your Lulu. Chester, what are you doing? I'm writing my memoirs. How I Failed at the Age of Ten by Chester Barkley. Oh, Chester, you didn't fail. Right now, a whole rooting section is shouting, We want Chester. They... They want me? Of course. Why else would they shout, we want Chester? I'll go where duty calls. <laughs> we want Chester. We want Chester. We Did want anyone Chester. find him? He vanished into thin air, dear. Uh, maybe he joined the Foreign Legion. Oh, I only have myself to blame. I pushed him into this. He'll never come back on his own. Dad! Chester! Chester, get in there at God and make baskets, son. Uh, yes, like you did in your yard all week, Chester. Just let me get that ball and watch my steam. That's my Chester. At last, she's self-motivated. And here's the tip-off for the start of the fourth quarter, with the Terriers leading 100 to nothing. And the tip goes to Chester Barkley. Wow, what a face! Gee, I never showed him that one. Uh, he'll do lots of things in life you won't show him, Barkley. And Chester Barkley scores! Barkley shoots again from outside. And scores! Unbelievable! Barkley's all over the court! Sensational pass. And the small prize score. Chester! It's fantastic, folks. Chester Barkley has gone wild. What a game. The small prize wins. Oh, Lulu. <laughs> Come back in ten years. You did it, Dad. You coached the team to a win. Nah, it wasn't me, kids. It was Chester who came through. All we fathers can win is our memories. And we fudge plenty on them, too. <laughs> kids' sports are for kids. Grown-ups, hands off. Oh, Arnie, I'm so proud of you for saying that. And so are we, Dad. Ah, thanks, kids. You know something, Roger? What, Dad? With your height, you could be a tennis champ. Now, with a little coaching from your father... Yeah! <laughs> well, it was worth a try. She's the flower of the Gower Gulch. A cow puncher's a sweetheart, it's a bit true. Barkley, 
He's the head of the Barclay House. Agnes Barclay is his devoted and loving spouse. They've got kids, Terry, Roger, and Chester, too. And all of them are Barclays through and through. Cause they're the Barclays and they're okay. And Arnie Barkley, with a very open mind, is always first to let you know his own opinionated ways. But even though he may grumble and get up tight, just remember Arnie Barkley's bark is worse than his bite. is a drag, Terry. Yeah, hand me the next chemical, Marsha. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> Just what I was afraid of, nothing. <laughs> well, there's one consolation. We only have a few more days of this class. Then we can choose all new ones. That's sure a relief. Chemicals and me just don't mix. What do you think we ought to take? I've got it. What is it that makes school interesting, even though we have to go to a lot of difficult classes? That's easy. Boys. Right. We'll get in a class where there's nothing but boys. Boys glee club? No. But there is one class where we could get in, and we could be the only girls. All the rest would be boys. What class is that? I'll enroll right now. <laughs> Just like it says here. Auto mechanics class. Enroll today. Must furnish car to work on. But where can we get a car? Maybe I could borrow Dad's. It needs work anyhow. Oh, auto mechanics and a class full of boys. Wow. Hi, Eddie. Trouble? I don't know. Wherever you look in the world today, it's tragedy. <laughs> That's sure the truth, Eddie. That's why I only read the sports section. Uh, but, Arnie, this is a sports section. Let me see that. Buffy St. Bernard, holder of the women's land speed record, has applied to enter one of the last remaining masculine strongholds, the Speedway 500. If accepted, she will be the first woman ever to qualify for this prestigious race. Wherever you look in the world today, Eddie, it's tragedy. Disease, war, pestilence. I mean, those are things a person can understand. But this is a disgrace to the normal profession of race driving. True, Eddie, true. But at least some women in my family know where they belong, as far from engines as they can get. Mom, any more toast? Yeah, me too, Mom. It's in the toaster, kids. Should be out any second. Watch out, Mom. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> that settles it. We've got to fix that toaster. Do you hear me, Arnie Barkley? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. No, oh, sure, Agnes. I took out the garbage. I have a feeling we're not going to get the toaster fixed. I just got an idea. Use a magnet to catch the toast. A magnet? This wrapper says their bread has plenty of iron. It's not that kind of iron, Chester. Yes, tell him, Terry. You took chemistry. Well, we never got to the part about bread. And besides, I had my last class yesterday. What are you going to take next? Auto shop. But you don't know anything about cars. I know. That's why I'm taking it, to learn about them. That reminds me. Uh, Daddy, can I borrow the car? Uh-huh. Oh, oh, sure, honey, sure. Well, whatever you said. Thanks, Dad. Oh, uh, here's your toast. Uh, yeah, sure, honey. Uh huh? Say, Agnes, how about a piece of toast without a hole in it? I can't, dear. The toaster's broken. Well, Agnes, why don't you tell me it needed fixing? But, Arnie, I tried to. Uh-oh, I'm late for work. See you tonight, gang. <laughs> Bye, Agnes. Bye, dear. Hey, Mom, 
Did I hear right? Did Dad actually say that I could take the car? Well, he said, sure, honey. So I guess that means yes. Yippee! Auto shop, here I come. <laughs> I'm Mr. Doberman. Welcome to Auto Shop. For our first assignment class, everyone will dismantle and reassemble their car motors. I'll be darned. Girls. Why not? That's right. Why not? This is a car. So far, so good. How are we going to get the engine out of your father's car? Well, I'll think of something. All you ever told me about was the boys. You never uh, said we'd have to do anything, oh, with cars. Well, every class has its drawbacks. Now, I'll start dismantling the engine, and as soon as I hand you each part, make a note of it and, uh, and put it on the ground uh, so we'll know where it is. Okay, if you say so. Do, Hickey. Do, Hickey. Think of a jig. Think of a jig. Whatchamacallit. Whatchamacallit. Well, the hard part's already done. Now all we have to do is put it together again. Yeah, that'll be easy, Terry. The only problem is, where do we start? It sure looks simple when Mr. Doberman did it. And to think we got into this mess just because we wanted to be around some dumb boys. Yeah, it isn't worth it. Hi, girls. How you doing? Okay, so far, all we have to do is get it all together. Great, yeah. When you finish up, we'll come back and treat you both to a soda. Uh, Terry? What? Um, I think it's worth it. <laughs> so do I. Let's get at it. I'm with you. Well, here we are, Mrs. Poodle. Last stop of the day. Thank you very much, Mr. Barkley. And I just wanted to tell you that I think you're doing a wonderful job driving this bus. You're very welcome, Mrs. Poodle. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Yes, sir. A wonderful job driving this bus. Well, say I am. And someday, everybody's gonna know it. Honey Barkley, champion bus driver. Hey, uh, Arnie, uh, the boss wants to see you on a double. Mr. Randale, see me? Oh, it's come at last. My raise. Come in. Uh, you want to see me, Mr. Airedale? Oh, Barclay, indeed I did. Come in, come in. I've had my eye on you for quite some time, Barclay, and that's why I've asked you to come up here. Well, thank you, Mr. Airedale. I can certainly use the extra... Yes, 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 yes. I knew you were just the one for the job I had in mind. A job? Yes. I'm having a party at my house tomorrow night, and I want you to pick up Senator Bird Dog at the airport and bring him to it. That's it? You mean you just want me to drive him? Precisely. And I can't emphasize the importance of the senator to our plans. New bus routes are up for grabs, and a good word from the senator to you-know-who could really mean a lot to us, Barkley. And that's all you want me to do? Just drive them? Um, your car does run, doesn't it? Of course it does. I always keep it in tip-top shape. Um, um, by the way, Mr. Airedale, uh, will Agnes and I get to come to the party? Well, I hadn't really planned... Yes, of course you can come, as long as you're already there. Great. We'll be at the airport at 8. What am I going to do? Daddy will throttle me when he finds out about the car. My advice is to leave immediately for South America. Oh, Roger, this is no time for jokes. I'm really in trouble. I think you should tell him the truth, Terry. The truth? The truth is that his car is in a million pieces on the floor of the school shop. Marsh is right, sis. The truth is always the best policy. Yeah, tell him the truth. On the phone from South America. Uh -oh. I think your father's home. Uh, see you later. Well, I might as well confess. Hello, everybody. I've got some very important news. Uh, Daddy, before you say anything, well, there's something that I've got to tell. I mean really big news. 
For one thing, your mother and I are going to a very exclusive party at the Airedales. But, Daddy, And we I... may even do a little dancing. What do you think of that, Terry? Daddy? Yes, sir, Terry. You're looking at a very important man. Mr. Airedale even asked me to drive the car out to the airport to pick up the senator. The car? South America, here we come. I'll get it. It's probably Mr. Rairdale. Hello? Who is it, Dad? It's one of the guys from our bowling league, Raj. Uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry, Eddie. You're going to have to count me out of the big bowling <coughs> game tomorrow night. Huh? Yeah, I'm getting the terrible... Oh, I may have to go to the hospital. Oh, Arnie. You guys go on bowling without me. <coughs> and I'll see you later. Here, Pop, you'll need these. What's all that junk? They're for your cold. Chester, I don't have any cold. But I just heard you say you did. That was just for Eddie's benefit. See, he wouldn't understand about the senator and all. You mean you lied? Not a lie, Terry. A white lie. It's almost the same as the truth, only, uh, not quite. Uh, it's a discount truth. You don't want any of the medicine? Of course not. Now put that stuff away. I'm going out to the garage to make sure the car's ready for tomorrow night. Now I really am in trouble. The car's not only completely apart, but Daddy needs it for something important tomorrow night. Yeah, he's going to be in here any minute wanting to know where the car is. Why don't you just tell him a white lie? I couldn't do that. That would be dishonest. No, it wouldn't be. Dad just said it wasn't. All right, where's the car? It isn't out there. Oh, it's okay, Dad. You said I could take it this morning at breakfast, and it's at school being, uh, polished. Polished? Oh, polished. Well, yeah, that'll impress the Senator. Now, just make sure it's back in plenty of time for tomorrow night. Oh, it will be, Dad. It will be. Promise me something, will you, Roger? Sure. Anything, sis. Will you be sure and write me down in South America? <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Woofley. I know it's Saturday, but my car is in the school shop. Maybe we could go and get it. Well, certainly. Go right ahead. Thank you, sir. Thanks again, Mr. Woofley. You're very... Huh? Welcome, girls. <laughs> Who would believe that I once got a speeding ticket in this mess of junk? The only thing it's capable of now is overtime parking. Do you really think we can get it all together by tonight? Positive. It's just a matter of following a series of simple steps. Like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's Daddy. What will we do? Quick, hide all the parts. Hello, kids. Hi, hi Dad. Dad. Um, uh, hi, Mr. Barkley. Hi. Yes, sir. I got quite a night ahead of me. You're looking at a very important guy. Uh, think I'll rest my weary bones. Oh, no, Dad. Uh, not there. It's all over. He's going to find out. An important man can't even sit down in his own house? Oh, sure, Dad, sure. It's just that you deserve the very best. Yeah, that's it, the very best. Uh, this chair over here. Oh, no! That was close. Is this what you call the best? Where are you going, Dad? I think I'll sneak a little snack before dinner. Uh, no, Dad, not the refrigerator. I can't look in my own refrigerator? No, I mean, we just cleaned it. Yeah, that's it. It's empty. So much for my sneaky little snack. We gotta get Dad out of the house long enough to rehide the car parts. How about hiding the parts in my room? But how will you get your dad out of the house? Yeah, out of the house. Wait a minute. I've got an idea that might work. 
Uh, Dad, today's Saturday. You've got to take out the trash. What? Right in the middle of the funnies? Sorry, Dad, but... Oh, all right. There's two things in life that are for sure. Taxes and trash. <laughs> How much more? My bedroom's beginning to look like the city dump. There. That's the last of it. And not a moment too soon. Your dad just came back in the house. I just thought of something. What are we going to do with the car up here? We can't put it together in Chester's bedroom. <laughs> Say, Agnes, did you just see a motor block fly past our window? Um, what's a motor block, dear? Yeah, forget it, Agnes. I must need glasses. <laughs> What now, Chester? Now we put the car together. Okay, Terry, pick up that part. That's it. Now place the round piece on top of the long straight piece. That's great. They really do fit together. At this rate, it'll be together in no time. An engine is really very easy to put together once you know how. There's something bugging me about it, though. I have a feeling we're doing something wrong. Wait a minute. I've got a buddy who has a car that looks almost exactly like Pops. I'll go find him. Roger did it. It looks exactly like ours. Hi, sis. I got it. Uh, he's made a few changes since... Oh, no. That's all different. This is terrible. What is Daddy going to say? What is that? That's not my car. That's a hot rod. Uh, it's all right, Daddy. Uh, it's our car. The boys in the shop just made a couple of adjustments, but they're easy to fix. Well, I'm not going in that thing, no matter whose car it is, and that's final. Senator Baydog? Yes? I'm Arnie Barkley. I'm here to take you to Mr. Airedale's party. Excellent. Let us be on our way. Remember, Barkley, I'm a senator, so you must drive carefully. Oh, yes, sir. You're in good hands, Senator Baydog. The hands of a full-time professional driver. <laughs> Be careful, Arnie. There's a stop sign. Uh oh It's Eddie and the guys. <laughs> Guys, you see what I see? It's Arnie. I thought he said he had a call. Hey, come on. Let's follow him. I want to see what's going on. Arnie, they're following us. Oh, boy. If they catch us, we'll end up at the bowling alley. <laughs> uh, step on it, Jack. Don't lose them. What's going on here? Oh, it's, it's all right, Senator. We'll be free of them in just a minute. We're going to duck out of sight behind this fence. Them. Arnie, where are we? What was that street we went down? Oh, no. We're in a steeplechase car race. Hang on for dear life. I'll get us out of here as soon as I can. Oh, no. A mud puddle jump. <laughs> You'll account for this. Now, I'll see to that. No. Believe me, Airedale's going to hear about this. I've never seen such a disgraceful performance in my life. But, Senator Birdzog, I can explain everything. Your unseemly conduct is explanation enough. But, Senator, sir, you don't understand. I understand. You said you were a professional driver. You didn't say you were a professional race driver. Oh, uh, Senator, how good of you to come. Airedale, your man's conduct has been outrageous, and I demand that you fire him immediately. Here we are, Terry. I'll be right back. I hope that hot rod didn't get Dad into trouble. Barkley, you're fired. Now take that hot rod and cool yourself off in the unemployment line. Oh, you can't do that, Mr. Airedale. This whole thing was my fault. It all happened because I couldn't face up to the truth. I didn't want Daddy to know that I had the car apart, so I told a white lie. 
I didn't realize that it could cause him so much harm. Terry, honey, if you told a white lie, I have to take the blame. I set a bad example for you. I'm at fault because I myself told a white lie. And that's the truth, Mr. Airedale. You know, Airedale, this man has just done a very difficult thing. I think it takes a very big person to admit he's wrong. And you're obviously a very good parent to be able to raise a daughter like that. Oh, Daddy. Forget what I said about firing Barkley, Airedale. It's clear to me that you've got a darn good man here. Yes, sir, Senator. That's what I've always said. Barkley's one of our best. Well, I... And don't argue with him, dear. And because you are one of the best, Barkley, you deserve something special. Mr. Airedale, you mean? Yes, Barkley, here. Have an hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> it's not the raise I expected. But every little bite helps. <laughs> Barkley House. Agnes Barkley is his devoted and loving spouse. They've got kids, Terry Roger and Chester too. And all of them are Barkleys through and through. Cause they're the Barkleys and they're okay. He may grumble and get up tight. Just remember, Arnie Barkley's bark is worse than his bite. What a way to spend a Sunday. Yeah. I wanted to spend the day just lying around. Some chance. Only two things lie around this place on Sunday. Leaves and paw. All right, where in the heck is that sports section? Agnes! Agnes, have you seen my sports section? I think you lined the garbage pail with it, Mom. Oh, dear. Hey, you're right, Terry. I see an orange peel and a football team. I'm sorry. Dear, I used it to line the garbage pail. What? <laughs> Give me that. Here, line the garbage pail with this. It's the society section. It, don't you want to read it? You've got to be kidding. Oh, Arnie. Now what? Didn't you go to school with the Sammy Schnauzer? Yeah, I went to school with him. <laughs> he was a dopey little pest. I couldn't stand him. I was glad when he moved out of town. Well, it says in the paper that he just moved back into town. Oh, yeah? Well, he better not call me. He's a real loser. And not according to the paper, dear. Uh, look, Terry. Mr. Sammy Schnauzer has moved into a luxurious penthouse with his wife and daughter. It says he's a self-made millionaire. Millionaire? Mr. Schnauzer is now one of the wealthiest men in the nation. My dear old pal, Sammy Schnauzer. Good old Sammy, my closest friend. But you said you couldn't stand him. I couldn't stand him being out of town. Hey, look, his daughter Elsie is Roger's age. I'll have to arrange for them to meet. Roger's old enough to pick out his own girls, dear. Yeah, but he isn't smart enough to pick out a millionaire. If he married her, he wouldn't have to work for the rest of his life. Phew. Mowing the lawn's hard work. From now on, son, you'll have servants to mow the lawn. Huh? Don't say, huh. Say, what is it you're referring to, sir? And take your hands out of your pockets. Straighten up. You're about to enter society. Poor Roger. I have the feeling he's in for a hard time. I have a feeling we're all in for a hard time. <laughs>
Chelsea Schnauzer, huh? Looks kind of snobby to me. That's how society people are supposed to look. Believe me, my boy, I know what's best for you. And there's nothing better for my son than a millionaire's daughter. She's a millionaire? Gosh, I'll marry her. <laughs> You're too young, Chester. You're still a half pint. So I'll be half a millionaire. Well, I don't want to marry a girl just because she's wealthy. He's right, Dad. When a person marries, it should be for love. Naturally. And who doesn't love money? But first, I've got to think of a way for you two to meet. I can't phone Schnauzer after all these years. It might seem uh, obvious. Hmm. There's got to be some way to do it. A uh, Barney. Quiet, I'm thinking. I've got to arrange it so the meeting will seem uh, accidental. I'll say one thing for you, dear. You're good at accidents. Very funny. I think I'll watch some TV. And now for the garden news. Chester, turn that thing off. One of the sponsors of today's flower show is debutante Elsie Schnauzer. Elsie Schnauzer? Turn that on! He told me to turn it off. The flower show will be at the municipal auditorium at 2. Now for the... That's it. Roger will meet Elsie at the flower show. But, Dad, I don't want to meet Elsie. And I don't want to go to the flower show. Of course you don't. <laughs> Not the way you're dressed. Come on, you gotta change. <laughs> Welcome to the flower show, Mrs. Vandermutt. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Dogwood? Good afternoon, Mrs. Houndbox. Now, be honest, Roger. Aren't you glad I talked you into coming? Okay, Dad, I'll be honest. I only came along to prove to you that this is no way to meet a girl. Well, you're here now, so come on. And that will be ten dollars, please. Ten dollars? To see some flowers? We can see them in the park for nothing. And then go to the park. Yeah, Dad. Let's go to the park. We're going in here. <laughs> it's worth ten bucks to make a million. Wow! Look at all the flowers. You better watch your hay fever, Dad. Forget my hay fever. And let's look for Elsie. I hope your rose wins first prize. It should. It took me 15 years of cultivation to develop this one perfect rose. Excuse me? But have you seen Miss Elsie? Yeah. Yeah. Has. Has. <laughs> My rose. Yeah. Has. 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 My tulips. Yeah. Hi, 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 My bougainvillea. Oh, my head. Darn, throw that man out. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. Quick, behind these bushes. That's funny, they were here a minute ago. Uh, 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 uh. Thanks, Roger. Ah! All right, you, come out of there. There's a word for someone like you. Das! Gesundheit? No, Hest. Come on, you're leaving. But my son's gonna meet Elsie Schnauzer. Miss Schnauzer's not here. Not here? She suddenly got a splitting headache. Oh, so did I. Hest! Arnie won't be in for work today, Mr. Airedale. Oh, is he sick? No, he's feeling fine, but his nose isn't. Oh, I can't help. Well, you tell Arnie not to worry about a thing, Mrs. Bartley. You tell him to relax, take it easy, and I'm docking him a day's pay. <laughs> Dear, he's docking you a day's pay. What's money compared to my son's happiness? Shouldn't you forget about it, Dad? Look what it cost you. Ten dollars for the garden show, money for allergy medicine, a day's pay. Uh, Terry's right, Arnie. Uh, do you know what'll happen if you keep this up? Yeah. Roger will have to settle for a cheaper wedding present. <laughs> I've got to think of another way for him to meet her. Back from your paper route so soon, Chester? Yeah, Mom. 
My old bicycle broke down. Oh, that's a shame. It's okay. I'll just buy a new one. Really? What are you going to use for money? Oh, that's no problem. I'll just go to the concert tonight, meet Elsie Schnauzer, and marry her. Concert? Tonight? Yeah. It says so in the paper. Let me see that. Among the notables attending the concert tonight will be Elsie Schnauzer. She'll be in box one in the Golden Circle. That's it! Roger! Roger! Roger, guess what? You're going to the concert tonight to meet Elsie Schnauzer. Concert? There goes my bicycle. You mean there goes my evening. I had a date tonight. Cancel it. But I can't. That must be Susan. Who's Susan? My date. You mean your former date. Hello. Hello, this is Susan. Is Roger there? No. Give me the phone, Dad. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that, Dad. Susan's my best girl. Son, you'll thank me for it later. It'll have to be later, because I'm sure not going to thank you now. Just get dressed. What are you doing, sis? Shh. The rescue squad is here. We're going to help you keep your date with Susan. I don't know if it's all right to sneak out on Dad. Not normally, but when he breaks your date with a nice girl so you can marry somebody you don't even know, you've got a right. Thanks, sis. You're a real pal. Is the coast clear? Not a soul in sight. I'll bet Susan will be surprised to see me. Hurry up. I'm having trouble holding it. Let me help you. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Dad! <laughs> I wish I could see Dad's face. Take a good look. Dad! Now get back up there and fast! Yes, sir! Well, Roger, this time you're bound to meet Elsie. I got your ticket in the same box. I'll wait for you here. Oh, you don't have to wait, Dad. I'll take the bus home. Oh, no. I'm not taking any chances on you sneaking out of the concert when I'm gone. Would I do such a thing? Yes. You're right. <laughs> that was a superb concert. Delightful. <laughs> hey, Dad. Mm -hmm. What? Come on. I want you to meet a sensational girl. Well, I told you you'd like Elsie Schnauzer. Oh, she couldn't make it, so she sent her maid. Look, isn't she some chick? Now look, I didn't spend 70 bucks on a tux and tickets for you to fall for the maid. Now get in the car. But Dad, she's a wonderful girl. She's got everything. Yeah, everything except money. Dad, I promised her a ride. No, all right. How was the concert, dear? How was Elsie? How'd you like to be quiet? <laughs> Something tells me it was another disaster. Poor Roger. You are a disgrace to your uniform. You've got to meet Elsie before some other boy does. There's no time to lose. You've got to meet her tomorrow. But tomorrow's my day on the college newspaper. Cancel it. I can't. I'm the new reporter. Reporter? Perfect. You'll go to her home and get an interview. Ask her what it's like to be the town's richest girl. Children, it's not polite to eavesdrop. Uh, what are they saying? Not a bad idea, Dad. But how do you know she'll grant me an interview? I've got it. I'll buy you a camera. A girl can't resist having a picture taken, just as she can't resist listening to doors. <laughs> Gee, Dad, this camera's neat. Well, it should be. I bought it from a fellow at work. Cost me forty dollars. Forty dollars? Oh, Arnie. Money well spent if he gets to meet Elsie. 
Now get going, Rog. Yeah, I can't wait to take pictures with this. Take some pictures of money, so we'll all remember what it looks like. <laughs> Don't worry. This time he'll meet Elsie for sure. Boy, I sure hope nothing went wrong this time. There's Roger now. I never thought I'd be happy to hear the sound of his motorcycle. <laughs> well, what happened? Uh, I, uh, I got dozens of pictures, Dad. Great! How did you and Elsie hit it off? I, uh, I, I didn't see Elsie. Didn't see her? Then how could you take a picture? Well, I didn't exactly take her picture. I took pictures of her limousine. Her limousine? It was parked in front. What a car! But what about Elsie? Oh, the paper would rather have a picture of that car than just another girl. She's not just another girl. Wait a minute, Roger. I got a feeling you don't want to meet her. Am I right? You're right. And you're wrong. Your whole fortune's at stake. I can't let you throw it away. Oh, who are you calling, dear? Sammy Schnauzer. If I can't arrange a meeting without it being obvious, I'll be obvious. Uh, hello. Hello, Sammy. This is Arnie Barkley. Barkley, Barkley. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't, uh... Yeah, Arnie Barkley, from school. Oh, yeah, Bonehead Barkley. <laughs> That's right, Bonehead Barkley. <laughs> bonehead? <laughs> Quiet, son of Bonehead. Uh, Sammy, and now that you're in town, I'd like to drop up with my family to see you. Uh, will Friday be convenient? No. Then we'll drop up Saturday. Uh, he can't wait to see us. Oh, I've never been to a penthouse before. Neither have we. Well, you'd better get used to it. The next penthouse we'll be going to will be Rogers. <laughs> well, this is it. Wow, some place. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, my good man. Here you are. Keep the change. Arnie, you're not supposed to tip a doorman. You're not? I should have left my coin changer at home. In any case, remember what I read you from this book of etiquette. Yes, Pop. Uh, it's not Pop. It's Papa and Mama. Got that? Sure, Pop. <laughs> now, remember, you're about to meet society. Terry, will you fix your dress? Straighten your tie, Roger. Chester, smooth your hair. Sammy, my old pal! Oh, you came. Uh, well, come on in. My wife, Margaret, my daughter, Elsie. Hello, I'm Agnes. I'm Terry. How do you do? I'm sure. Uh, Elsie? I want you to meet my handsome, brilliant, and charming son. Hi, Elsie. Get back. <laughs> Roger, this is Elsie. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> nice to meet you. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't think she likes me. Ridiculous. She's nuts about you. She's just shy. She's shy of few manners. Oh, my. You have a lovely penthouse. Oh, why, thank you, Mrs. Barkley. We'll have the same setup when Roger marries Elsie. <laughs> <laughs> He's always joking. I should certainly hope so. Well, Sammy, old pal, you sure did okay for yourself. Well, I have no complaints. Uh, how are things with you, Arnie? What business are you in? Uh, well, uh... I'm in the uh, transportation game. Uh, oh, uh, uh, yes, um, uh, transportation. Oh, railroads or airlines? He drives a bus. Chester! Oh, my good bus! Huh? Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry? It was only a genuine Louis XIV. Now, don't you worry. I'll take it to Louis the Repairman on 13th Street. <laughs> Your father is dreadfully gauche. I don't know what gauche means, 
But if it means what I think it means, you'd better not mean it. Uh, Elsie, uh, uh, why don't you show Roger the pool? You have a pool? Wow! Oh, my! A pool on the roof! What'll they think of next? Boy, I sure wish I'd brought my swimsuit. Uh, I have some suits. Hey, great! I can't wait till I go in. I can't wait till he goes home. <laughs> Last one in to neck! I hope the neighbors don't see him. Watch this! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, 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 goodness, I, I believe he went off the roof. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This pool's a little too deep for me. <laughs> oh, don't go away, Arnie. We'll save you. Give me your hand, Dad. I'll pull you back up. Oops, you got me all wet. Gosh, Miss Elsie, I'm sorry. Here, let me dry you off. Stop it, you, you bus driver. Wait a minute, little Miss Snob. Dad might only be a bus driver, but he sure outclasses you in every way. Now, that's no way to talk to my daughter, young man. That's no way to talk to my brother. That's no way to talk to my husband. And that's no way to talk to my husband. And no, I you think you, you are. I, are not oh, you just, I, just... I guess from now on, our two families aren't talking. <laughs> well, I finally got to say hello to Elsie Schnauzer. <laughs> and goodbye to a million dollars. Well, money isn't important when it comes to choosing friends or getting married. Yeah, I know that now. Hey, Dad, can I borrow ten bucks? What for? I've got a date with Susan tonight. Here's a dollar. How come just a dollar? Because I don't want no fortune-hunting girl marrying my son just for his money. <laughs> <laughs> the head of the Barclay House. Agnes Barclay is his devoted and loving spouse. They've got kids, Terry Roger and Chester too. And all of them are Barclays through and through. Cause they're the Barclays and they're okay. He may grumble and get up tight. Just remember, Arnie Barkley's bark is worse than his bite. Oh, boy. What a week. Now I can relax all weekend. Uh, what time should I set the alarm for, dear? This Saturday, Agnes, I'm sleeping in. Set the alarm for 2 p.m. Uh, but how's the clock going to know I mean 2 p.m. and not 2 a.m.? Well, if a clock doesn't know the difference, I don't know what would. <laughs> Get the light, Agnes. Uh, good night, dear. Yeah, happy snoozing, Agnes. Yeah. Back in the bus, folks. All right, don't crowd the bus. Hang on tight. <laughs> Left time coming up. Next stop, 55th and Colonial. <laughs> Arnie, dear, would you please let me back in bed? No exceptions, ma'am. You don't pay the bus fare, you don't get on the bus. But Arnie! The exact change. <laughs> Okay, hop in, lady. Take any vacant seat. Oh, for goodness sake. Arnie, what's happening? So 
something crazy's going on outside. I hope it's not the end of the world. I don't get paid till Monday. You wait here, Agnes. I'll see what it is. All right, Beagle. What's the big idea of waking me up at the crack of sunrise with all this racket? Decided to put in a swimming pool, Arnie. Thought I'd class up the neighborhood. Oh, yeah? You could do that by just moving out. <laughs> Ouch! Oh, thanks, Arnie. We were looking for that underground pipe. Oh, by the way, I'm building a larger gate in our fence so you and the family can use my pole any time you want. Ha, ha, ha. If you think you're going to impress my family with that overgrown outdoor bathtub, you're com... A pool! Right next door! We can all go swimming. Let's wait till the water's in, shall we? What a revolting development this is going to be. <laughs> OK, Sunday brunch. Come and get it. <laughs> Hamburgers, Chester, just like you like them. Rare. No, thanks, Pop. It's not smart to eat before you swim. Well, fish do. They even eat while they're swimming. If you want me, I'll be at the Beagles in their pool. What's the matter with the Atlantic? Because it doesn't have a diving board. Come and get them, family. Hamburgers, medium. Sorry, Dad, but we're going swimming. That Mr. Beagle's got some swimming pool. Some swimming pool. Big deal. Come and get them, Agnes. Hamburgers, well done. <laughs> oh, no. Not you, too. At one time, this outfit was very daring. Yeah, and at one time, this hamburger was very rare. I can hardly go to the Beagles reeking from onions, dear. But, Agnes, the reek's all burned out of them. Oh, come on, I can't eat five hamburgers. It try, dear. And see you later. But, 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 Agnes. Hi, Arnie. What's doing, Bunny family? Does I check? Whoa, Al, you're just in time. How about some hamburgers? Chard. Uh, no thanks. We're going swimming at Beagles. Oh, hey, fellas. Wait. Take two. Resold your shoes. <laughs> came over. Put on some swim trunks and take a dip. Very funny, Beagle. Yeah, come on in, Dad. Into that chlorinated frog pond? Ha! It's heated. Yeah, so's Mount Fuji. <laughs> Neat, huh, Dad? There's nothing like a swimming pool. Oh, Terry, guess what? Mr. Beagle says you can have your birthday party here. Super! Super! I'll buy you a rubber cake so it'll float on water. <laughs> Darn that, Beagle. A pool isn't the only way to have fun. I'll show them. Next Sunday is my day. Pop, if you're trying to play blind man's bluff, you're playing it wrong. That isn't why you're blindfolded. I got it. Dad's gonna give us a swimming pool. Now hold it. No swimming pool. I'm not raising a waterlogged family. A game room? Where we can throw dances? No, 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 no. What do you think, Agnes? I think I just stubbed my toe. <laughs> okay, Barclays. Unblindfold for the big surprise. Well, what do you see? A croquette set. Yeah, only the best for my family. Way out, Dad. Just what we kids have been looking forward to. Isn't it more a game for older folks? Over 20? This will give us something to do in our own backyard on Sundays. Now, you first hit the ball through the first wicket. You mean like this? Chester <laughs> wins. Game's over. Thanks for the game, Dad. Now, let's go swimming. Yippee! Yippee! Yahoo! Yippee! Yippee! Boy, oh boy. I'm losing my family to a king-size fishbowl. <laughs> How am I going to get my little fishes back? How can you show up a show-off? I'm next door to a guy with a pool. 
and I'm five blocks past my street. Would you please let me off? Well, I think to make eyes pop out with envy, there's nothing like mink coats. <laughs> nah, mink coats wouldn't look right for Roger and Chester. Now I'm ten blocks past my street. Why don't you buy a yacht? Hey, that's it, a yacht. The American symbol of envy. You can be broke, but if you own a yacht, nobody knows it. Welcome to the Slick Yacht Sales Company. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, we're looking for a boat. Something to uh, knock around the world in. Well, that will require a rather sizable craft. Hey, this little number on the floor looks real nice. It should look nice. It's our top drawer item, a slick craft. Hmm, there's only three portholes. And no problem, Terry. We'll just take turns looking through them. <laughs> well, I'd hate to buy a uh, pig in a poke. Uh, maybe you could take us on a spin to Bermuda. <laughs> See how she rides. Pop, this is a cabin cruiser. You know how much it could set you back? Couldn't be too much. Nine-tenths of it is hollow. Mr. Barkley, the mahogany trimmings, the brass fittings alone are... What are you doing there? You'll have to knock a little off the price. There's a loose part here. That, sir, is the rudder. It's supposed to be loose, Dad. Otherwise, you just go straight. You're right, son. And if we went around the world, that would be in a circle. <laughs> uh, how much? Mr. Barkley, the price of this cabin cruiser is $100,000. $100,000? Wow. I'd never earn that much if I lived to be a thousand. I guess we'll have to start liking croquet. Or Dad will have to start liking Mr. Beagle's pool. Never. I have just figured out a way to get the money to buy a boat. How? Simple. By moonlighting. Oh, Arnie, I don't think it's fair you should hold down two jobs so we can have a yacht. Me? I'm not taking that extra job. You are, and you are, you all are. Us? Work? What a revolting development this is. It's a tradition of the sea. If you want a boat, you'll all have to work for it. Oh, yeah? Well, how about John Paul Jones? I'll bet all three of them took jobs. <laughs> Let's see, a job. I can't play tackle for the Rams. I'm not old enough. I could mow lawns. When I agreed to mow this lawn for a buck, they didn't tell me it was fast-growing grass. A job? Suppose I washed cars. At a dollar a car, a million cars would be a million dollars. How can I break even when my first job is washing a school bus? A job? I could be a tutor in algebra. Only it's my worst subject. Maybe I could be a car hop at a drive-in. All right, now here's what we want. Don't make any mistakes. We want one hamburger, lettuce and tomato and onions, two hamburgers, whole the onions with relish and mustard. One hamburger, whole the mustard, light relish, thin slice of pickle, one hamburger on toasted whole wheat, same as the onions, relish and mustard, only holy relish, add cheese, and don't forget this. Oh, gee. All right, let's put it to a family vote. Those in favor of moonlighting so we can buy a yacht will say aye. Either you're turning me down or we've been hit by an epidemic of lockjaw. Huh. By the time we earn enough to buy a yacht, you know how old we'll be? My beard will get tangled up in the anchor chain. And besides, I'm too young to get a job. Chester, do you realize when George Washington was your age, he was a surveyor? And when he was your age, he was president. So I picked a bad example. Well, dear, uh, maybe you could borrow the money from a bank. No, there's a catch in that. They want to be paid back. Mm. I got it. I got it. Listen, build a better mousetrap, and the world will be the path to your door. After all this, you're going to build a mousetrap? <laughs> no, a boat. I'm building a yacht myself. Here's your lunch, Dad. Thanks, Raj. Hey, Chester, you sure this is going to come out a boat? If it doesn't, we can use it for a large birdhouse. Where are you going to find a bird who'd live in a thing like this? Now, look, you doubting Thomases. Wood floats, don't it? Yeah. And air floats, don't it? Yeah. So if you put wood around air, 
It's got to flow, don't it? You seem scientifically sound. Well, of course. Your dad knows what he's doing. So how come you're sawing your lunch in half? <laughs> I just want to divide it between you kids. How can such straight wood come from round trees? You can't force that into a curve. It's solid wood. What's wood but a lot of sawdust packed together? Come on, give me a hand. To make sure it don't come loose, I'll wrap around some adhesive tape. Adhesive tape? Pop, this is a boat, not a sore finger. Yeah, you're a crazy little boat at that. Pop, watch out! Huh? No! <laughs> oh, I better be careful what I say about that boat. <laughs> She's a little touchy. Well, finished at last. Now, you kids will have to learn navigation, like reading that compass. Let's see. N.W. is northwest, S.W. is southwest. Aye, aye. What's this? 1.95? That's the price tag. Oh, Arnie, if this is a clock, it says it's half past breezy. Avast there, matey. That's a barometer. What's it for? Well, if you don't want rough weather, you just turn the barometer to fair. You think she's seaworthy? There's only one way to find out. We'll float her in Beagle's swimming pool. Hey, me! We could launch her off the diving board. But, Dad, that doesn't seem right. The pool is supposed to be for people. Yeah. Mr. Beagle was unhappy when I dropped a bobby pin in his pool. And just imagine how he'll feel when we drop a whole boat. Listen, the Beagles will be away tomorrow, right? Right. And Beagle invited me over and said to bring a friend, right? Right. Well, this man's best friend is his boat. <laughs> All right, batten down the poop decks. Missing the mass. Then here she goes there. Clean to port. Haul in the anchor and throw out the garbage. Fuck in them sheets. Fans head to starboard. Heave ho, mates. Snug harbor sighted dead ahead. Okay, Pop. Shall we shove her in? No, this is a yacht, not a bait barge. <laughs> We're having a launching ceremony. Now, where's your mother? Oh, I'm so nervous. I never launched anything before. Outside of the children, of course. My friends, we have built this water buggy with loving hands. May she have calm seas, a well-stocked bilge, and always go full anchor ahead. And now, Mrs. Barkley, please proceed with the launcher. With pleasure, Mr. Barkley. With this king-sized imported root beer, I hereby dub thee the good Bark Barkley. <laughs> oh, my goodness! She's sinking! We're going down! Now, don't anyone panic. Let's keep our heads. Abandon ship! Everybody abandon ship! Save the women, children, and all household pets! Come on, Dad! You're next! Jump! You're forgetting the grand tradition of the sea. The captain goes down with his ship. Why? Why? Yeah. So he can direct salvage operations. Oh, thank goodness, Arnie. You're alive. Not if Beagle finds my boat in the swimming pool. We've got to call the Coast Guard. <laughs> Have you contacted the Coast Guard yet, Chester? I'm working on it, Pop. Calling Coast Guard, calling Coast Guard. Come in, please. This is the Coast Guard. What's your trouble? This is the captain of the good Bark Barkley. We sunk. The captain? Well, then how come you didn't go down with your ship? I did, but I came back up. Are the survivors in the rowboats? Rowboats? Oh, I knew we forgot something. <laughs> Did any of the crew survive? If so, and where are they? Oh, they're all fine. One's in the kitchen frying up some chicken, one's cleaning her room, and one is setting the table. Paul, did... I'm not sure what I'm hearing. Just what position did your ship go down? In an upright position in my neighbor's swimming pool. <laughs> what is this, April Fool? We're the Coast Guard. We're busy. We rescue ships. Well, come rescue this one. And if you get here before Beagle comes home, you boys can have a free swim. <laughs> and so I say to you lads of the Coast Guard who, heedless of risk, rescued my ship from the deep end of Beagle's swimming pool. Save your breath, Barkley. Here's a present for you. A citation for going down with my ship? No, 
a citation for coming up with $200 for wasting the Coast Guard time towing a ship through a fence, Barkley. Because of you, I can lose my house, my car, be in debt forever, and lose my credit rating. You really shouldn't blame the boat, Pop. It didn't ask to come into the world. You know, you kids make a lot of sense. It's my fault, my pride, my trying to keep up with the Joneses. You mean the Beagles, don't you, Dad? <laughs> yeah. Well, you had to find it out sooner or later, kids. Your father's only human. Well, you're still the best father any kid's ever had. And we'll help you dig up all that money somehow. Hey, how about a raffle? We'll patch up the boat and raffle her off. A raffle? Sure. Our little boat will pay for herself. Sir, how'd you like to buy a dollar raffle ticket? You can win a yacht. What could I do with a yacht? I'm on top of poles all the time. But it's for a good cause. What cause? Cause my pop's in trouble. In that case, okay. <laughs> Down with capitalism! Down with capitalism! Oh, sir, can I interest you in a raffle ticket? For only one dollar, you can win a yacht. A yacht? Where I can loaf in the sun and laugh at the world? That's right. Okay, slip me ten tickets. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Zookeeper. Okay, who's next? <laughs> well, a sale's a sale. Uh, how many? <laughs> three tickets coming up. That'll be three dollars, sir. Three bananas? All right, here's for the lumber. And this is for the tools, barometer, compass, and the paint. And this is for the rope, the mast, and this is for ten buckets of nails. Oh, my poor Arnie. His biggest enemy is the man who invented charge account. <laughs> Friends, the winning number for this beautiful yacht will be picked by the builder, my father. Pick a number, Dad. Okay, okay. Hurry up, Pop. Who won? Read it. How can I when I'm blindfolded? Oh, uh, thanks, Agnes. Now remember, only one person can win. And please, keep the acceptance speech short. A lot of love went into this yacht. Oh, for goodness sakes, Arnie, who won? Of course, no members of our family or employees are legible. Oh, come on, Pop. And this contest is only legal in states where raffles are legal. Read the winner. But, kids, I hate to give up my boat. Read it. Okay, ladies and gents. The winner of this yacht is number 183. 183? That's me. I win. Bingo! Beagle? Beagle won? Now he's got a swimming pool and my yacht. Oh, he can't do this to me. But Arnie, he won it fair and square. Fair and square? I'll show him fair and square. I'll sue. It's unconstitutional. Arnie, calm down. Now, don't get excited. Who's calm? Who's excited? Oh, I said it was going to be a remote development, and it sure is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you. Mwah, love you. Okay, so I'll see you later, huh? I'll give you a call. Oh, gnarly!